Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Saturday, May 16th, I believe it is. Um, I was thinking last night about uh, getting something to you this morning. This came to my mind, and so I want to uh, I want to try to uh, address this for us. Uh, I'm going to be start off in Genesis 25, 27 through 34 in the King James Version of the Bible. And it says, And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau, because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Oh, Jacob, he was a mama's boy. I can relate to that, because um, I was a mama's boy, for sure. And so I can relate to old Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. And uh, Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am, for I am faint. Therefore his name was called, therefore was his name called Edom. Esau was the eldest and Jacob was the younger. They were twins, but um, but Esau was the eldest. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit hath, shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. We have a birthright. It's not for sale. Don't ever sell your birthright. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. And it goes on telling you when uh, Esau finds out that uh, there's nothing left for him from the father to pass down to him, he weeps a bitter uh, cry. It was really pitiful. But there's another, uh, about 10 verses in the Bible I want to read to you. And it's uh, Matthew 27, 1 through 10 in the King James Version of the Bible. It said, When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him and, and led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor, then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the, and the elders, saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And he and the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for us to put them in the treasure, because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field of very strangers in. Wherefore that field was called this day the field of blood until this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel, whom they the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed. Um, so that's two instances of people, you know, uh, uh, you, you can make a permanent decision about a temporary situation. Uh, Esau, it was a bowl of soup that he gave his birthright. Um, it should have been the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau, but it wasn't. He sold his birthright. It's, became the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So see what that did to him? It just changed the whole course of, of his life and of, and of history. I want to talk to you today about the greed of man, the, the restlessness of man. Um, I know I've got, you see little, little children, and it takes them a while to learn to share, and they'll say, mine, it's, it's mine. Uh, I've learned in my life like the old saying says, grass seems greener on the other side, but it's not really 
Some people, no matter how good they have it, this, that greed and restlessness, man, they're always looking for something else. And they got something good right there in front of them. Some folks want everything they see you with. Uh, they hadn't even thought about it till they see you with it, and then they want it, whatever it is, the, the latest, newest of whatever. They want your house, they want your job. Although they got a good house and they got a good job, they want yours when they see you with it. But I've come to tell you today that you better keep what you got because what you got is probably better than what you're looking at trading for. You know what it is you got. You know what that is. But you really don't know what it is that you're uh, looking at. Everything that glitters is not gold. You can't tell a book by looking at its cover. Sisters, I know your husband may not be as handsome as he used to be. Uh, he may have lost his hair. Check. Uh, may have gained 100 pounds. Close. But he's good to you. He makes you a living. You, you'd better hold on to him. Now, brothers, it's your time. You know your wife, she might have gained that 100 pounds. Um, she may not be the girl that, that you married as far as that goes. but And she may have gained 100 pounds, but she keeps the house clean. She keeps your plate full. She tends and sees after your children and keeps them clean. You better hang on to that good woman. The young kids, they're, they're restless and at home, and they start thinking about getting an apartment, being their own man, their own person. And uh, uh, But they don't realize that you're paying the telephone, the utilities, uh, that you got a full refrigerator full of food. When they get their own apartment, they, and they flip a light switch and it don't come on. Or, or they pick up their cell phone and there's no dial tone because uh, the carrier had to cut the phone off. Uh, go, we, when we're growing up, we go to the refrigerator and stand with the door open, no telling how many minutes, seeming like 10 minutes. But you may go and it may be empty after you've traded Under the Mosaic Law, the elders got the birthright, like like Esau, um, like like the, the the prodigal son. Uh, he said, "Give me that portion that falleth unto me." He got one portion. The eldest son got a double portion. He got two, and um, so Esau was set up if he would have just been happy. Not only did he get all of that, but the eldest got the official authority passed down to him from the father. Um, uh, most of the people I've seen that's traded things like that, uh, they didn't even like what they traded for. They didn't want it anymore. They just despised it. And another thing while I'm thinking about it is uh, I was young once. I'm 71, but I received the Holy Ghost. I was 28, and we'd go over to other people's houses, and I know there's a trick that Satan can play on you. You may be two couples, and I want to warn you to be careful about this trick. You, know, you go over to these houses, and you see how the woman treats the man that you're visiting, or, or if they visit your house, and you think, boy, I wish my wife treated me that way. But there's a trick. You've got a good wife, uh, and there's people that their, their homes have busted up, over the trickery, the wiles of the devil. Children of God are the greatest people in the world. They'll feed you when you're hungry. You just see what the world will do for you when you get down on your luck. You may think, well, I don't know if the children of God would really help me if it come at that. You just get down, and they'll. I, I, I feel like they'll be there for you. But the world, I have no confidence that they will. And you better be careful because the enemy wants to know your weakness. 
They didn't want to know. The enemy wants to know what you will swap for. Uh, he wants to know your weakness so he can destroy you. Like Samson, Delilah kept on. Uh, so on by, she was implored by the Philistines and found out Samson's secret, and they gouged his eyes out. And uh, I found out that people before, uh, but before he got his eyes gouged out, he got blind spiritually. So if we get blind spiritually, we can't see these tricks and wiles of the devil. Uh, there's been many people in the Bible that's been tricked. Uh, sad cases, David and Bathsheba, and uh, many more. But you might ought to think about keeping what you got. I tell you, salvation, my salvation is the greatest thing that I've ever thought about having. Uh, living for God is the greatest thrill I've ever known. And I wouldn't think about trading, not for one little bit. But you know, Satan, he will tempt you just like he did Jesus in the wilderness. And he'll try to, he'll try to test your limits and see what you made out of and what you will do. But uh, all the people I've seen that traded God for something else, they regretted it so bad. And uh, so I heard a man one time, Brother Dewey Barrier, he said, get you a yellow piece of paper, line paper. He, he preferred line paper because he couldn't write straight without it. And get you a well, piece of paper, it don't have to be yellow, and draw you a line down it in the middle. Start out on the side about what's for you. Write everything you can think of. And then if you're not ashamed, go over to the side that's what's against you. I think I don't hardly ever make that because there's so much for me, going for me, that I don't even care to look at anything that's going against me. May God bless you. I, try, I did this trying to help you. And until the next time, may he bless you.